They didn't seem to, Stephen. At the end of the day, I think that that's something that we're seeing not just coming from the government here in the UK, but certainly from the government in the United States as well. Now, there's been a lot of buzz, as you mentioned, about the Crown Prince's visit to the UK and about the prospective visit to the United States and whether or not this PR offensive, this massive PR offensive that we've seen from the Saudis is really going to actually turn people uh, against him because they think it's a little bit too much. But at the end of the day, as you say, these governments have very little choice. And it's interesting to note that when we look at this $65 billion of commitments in terms of future trade, in terms of security, in terms of deals that are going to be on the horizon, at least according to the government uh, and in the UK and in Saudi Arabia, if you look at that, it's really, it's more moves by the Saudis than what we've seen with Russia, certainly what we've seen with China, and certainly what we've seen uh, with commitments to the United States in, term of the, in terms of that economic diplomacy. Now, of course, there were hundreds of protesters out here in the streets in, in the UK in terms of you know, taking on the issue of Yemen, talking about 10,000 people dead in a cholera epidemic. A lot of questions about whether or not it was ethical for the United Kingdom's government really to continue that relationship with Saudi Arabia. But Boris Johnson seemed to have an answer. Let's listen in to what he had to say. It is vital that we bring this appalling conflict, which has inflicted so much suffering, to an end. Britain supports Saudi Arabia's right to defend its national security against missile attacks from Yemen, many of which have targeted the kingdom's cities, including Riyadh. Any solution to the conflict must ensure that Saudi Arabia no longer faces this cross-border security threat. Today, we have agreed to strengthen the UN inspection of shipping in order to ensure that all Yemeni ports remain open to the humanitarian and commercial supplies that they so desperately need. Uh, we also call on the Houthis to do what they must and allow unimpeded humanitarian access in the areas that they control. Now, of course, the Saudis, if you speak to them about this Yemeni issue, I mean, they will continue to point back to the idea that if you were sitting in the United States, in Texas, and these kinds of uh, missiles were being lobbed at you across the border from Mexico, you'd certainly have a problem with that, and you'd certainly have to take that on uh, head on, and that's just what they say that they are doing. Now, it's interesting to note, of course, that we're standing out here in front of Mansion House. There's going to be a massive uh, CEO forum with the Saudis meeting many business leaders from the UK talking about future investments and the possibility for cross-border investment. And, of course, I spoke with with members of the Saudi delegation overnight, and they were saying to me they felt very positive about what's been happening here. But at the end of the day, there are going to be a lot of questions going forward about whether or not governments, institutional investors, and, and basically people, men on the street, you know, buying into Saudi debt, buying into the future of Saudi Arabia, whether that's going to be enough uh, moving forward to not only you know change Saudi Arabia's economy, but also continue to support the current regime. There seems to be a lot of positivity around that. And of course, everyone here that I've been speaking to over the last couple of days, all of the Saudi delegation still quite positive on what has been done so far. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.